And good morning again. The House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers has been out front from the beginning defending the NSA programs since they first came under fire. Mr. Chairman, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you about the president's speech, but the first thing I want to get to is that uh, you have suggested that perhaps Edward Snowden had some help from the Russians. Uh, he, of course, the man who dumped all of this uh, information yeah. out on us from from the web uh, and from the Ameri American files. Uh, what makes you say that? Well, a couple of things. I, I said that there is, he's likely to have had help. Uh, I think there are some uh, interesting questions we have to answer that certainly would lend one to believe that the Russians had at least in some part uh, something to do with a, either helping his uh, capabilities. We we noticed that a guy that was worried about privacy issues spent a lot of time, uh, and as a recent DIA report uh, revealed, stealing information, the vast majority of which had nothing to do with the NSA program and everything to do with our military capabilities, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, number one. He'd have to go and look for that information. Uh, there are some security things that he did get around that are, were clearly above his capabilities. The way he departed and how he ended up in Moscow. Now, we still have some questions there, uh, but I can guarantee you he's in the loving arms of an FSB agent right today, and that's not good for the United States, and it's not good for the information to be shared with nation states that actually hinders and will cost us billions of dollars, by the way, Bob, uh, to try to rectify the problems he's caused in the military operations. You said that some of the things, some of the things that took place after he left, adds to your suspicion. Uh, just tell us what you can about that. Well, sure. There's a couple of things that we worry about. One is uh, there were some, at least some events and some, some small reflections on everything from how he prepared to leave, uh, his route of departure, his de uh, and uh, how he quickly ended up uh, in Moscow. All of those things raise questions, and there's some of that's still under investigation, but there's some clear evidence there that something else was going on. This wasn't a random smash and grab, run down the road, end up in China, uh, the bastion of internet freedom, and then Russia, of course, the bastion of internet freedom. Something more was going on there, and because of the nature of the information that was stolen, uh, again, nothing to do with Americans' privacy, a lot to do with uh, our operations overseas. Some of those operations, by the way, from a military perspective, are being turned off today. That's a significant problem, and it gives indications that this is not what it appears to be. And when you look at the totality of the information he took, the vast majority of it had to do with military, tactical, and operational uh, events happening around the world. One particular agency alone estimated uh, from conversations I've had, up to uh, several billion dollars to try to fix the problem. One military in institution. You know, the fact that uh, you're making these, uh, uh, that you're, you're revealing this just as our Olympic athletes are getting ready to go to Russia, yeah. uh, are they safe? Well, I have real concerns about the safety. You know, the Russians have not been fully cooperative on a security front with uh, sharing information that might uh, might be helpful in the securing of both of our athletes and the participants, people who are there to view the games. Uh, I, I'm concerned. I, we have got to have better cooperation as we move forward if we can ensure uh, the absolute safety, not only our athletes, but people who are there to watch the games. Uh, I think they think this is a political embarrassing situation for them. They're not going to share. That's really the wrong attitude when you're talking about an international event in a place where we've seen successful and targeted events. Remember, this wasn't like Atlanta where some guy stumbles into the park and has he's a one-off kind of guy mm -hmm. uh, to pull off an event. This is an organization that is dedicated to violence for its political gain. They have publicly stated they want to target the games. They have already targeted security in the region. This is a whole different animal, and we need full and absolute cooperation from the Russians on that front if we can make sure that our Well, when you are say they're not cooperating and not sharing, what do you mean? Well, uh, they're cooperating to a small degree, but there is information that we think is valuable about uh, organizational activities that we're fairly confident that the Russians track that they're just not sharing with our security forces. This has been a tug of war. People are pushing and pulling on this. This shouldn't be this difficult. Uh, it is in everyone's interest, including the Russians, to share that information with our security forces so that we can uh, make sure that 
our, our activities, our, uh, our, our athletes and the participants are safe when they go to the games. Are we doing what we should be doing here? Are we taking precautions, extra precautions? We're doing everything that's possible. Our security services are doing everything they can to try to make sure that we're safe. There is, again, some cooperation with the Russians. We do know that it has a, an ending point, and it really, in this particular case, shouldn't do it. Uh, we need to continue to put pressure on the Russians to fully cooperate so that we can get some of these questions answered. Let me uh, shift to what I asked you here to uh, talk about this morning. Uh, the president's big speech, the changes that he outlined, uh, did he go too far? Did he get it just right? Did he not go far enough? Well, two things. First, the speech was good in the sense that it said, listen, no abuses, legal program, not a domestic spying operation that you have seen, and that rhetoric has occurred over the last year. I think he put that to bed. That's important. This was a program that was overseen by the judicial branch, the congressional uh, or the legislative branch, and, and the White House. Lots of oversight, not illegal, no abuses. That's important. Secondly, the, the disappointing part of the speech uh, was only in Washington, D.C. can you announce the review of the review of the review in 70 days uh, and that be a decisive uh, action taken. It interjected some uncertainty into the business records program that we really do need and count on to keep us safe. Some of the other I issues I think are workable. This one had an immediate impact on that program, especially calling for uh, a warrant before access to uh, the phone records. And let that's, me, that's concerning. Let me just ask you about this uh, phone records business. And yeah. one of the things he said needs to be addressed, but he said, I don't have an answer for you yet, is what do we do with this vast trove of telephone numbers that the National Security Agency uh, is collecting and has under its control? Uh, some are saying that ought to be put into private hands uh, rather than mm -hmm. government hands. Where do you see that going? Well, this is, this is that uncertainty that I talked about. The president outlined why, and I thought, well done. He art articulated why he thought the program was important. Uh, it closed a gap that we found after 9-11. It, it provided the, the closing of the gap of something we missed that could have helped us stop 9-11. Got it. Then he said, well, I have some concerns about moving it to the private sector. He outlined that very well. And then he said, but I don't think the government can do it, so I'm going to we're going to conduct another 70-day review, basically, uh, and then review it again. And that's the uncertainty that was not helpful. Well, do you think the private sector can do this better than the government? I mean, I look at yeah. what happened here in Target, what's happened at Neiman Absolutely. Marcus. Would you rather keep it under government control or, or move it to a well, private? Well, think about what you're asking the private sector to change some systems that they have in order to accommodate a government mandate. I, I don't think that's the right answer. Think about what we've been able to do. You lock this system away. There has been no disclosure of any of the information. There's no names and addresses in the vault. So imagine a, 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 if you're at a police station and you have an evidence vault. Uh, it is locked and very strictly controlled about who has access. That's really what they've done here is they've taken what could potentially be evidence of a crime, uh, and warrants often collect things even in a warrant that has nothing to do with a crime, but you need it to compare it, put it, lock it away in a vault, uh, no names, no addresses, and then they take an overseas number that they know has been associated with a terrorist to dip into it. Now, through that, there is a court review of that, there is an IG review of that, there is an internal NSA review, a DOJ review, a Senate Intelligence Committee review, and a House Intelligence Committee review. If you move all that to the private sector, you lose all of the review. That goes away. And, and you open it up to privacy concerns I don't think we've talked about. Divorce, divorce lawyers are going to have a heyday. Uh, private detectives on any civil matter anywhere in the country are going to have a heyday. The, the companies tell us they believe they will be deluged with uh, warrants on these uh, telephone records that the companies can't sustain. And they're there to provide service to their customers, not work for the government. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for being with us this yeah. morning. You really uh, broadened uh, uh, the information that we had about this and, yeah. uh, and, and also I think underline just how complex this is. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, we want to go now.